Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all denarians on the go and in the know. Like subscribe, and share to help support the channel. First article of interest for today. Mr. Amar al-Hakim stresses to al qazemi the necessity of carrying out early elections and the demands of the demonstrators. The head of the National Wisdom Stream, Mr. Amar al-Hakim, received in his office Prime Minister Mustafa al qazemi and he blessed him for his government's confidence in the parliament. A statement issued by his office, which was received by al Furat News Agency, said that Mr. Amar al-Hakim stressed during the meeting that the crisis should be a top priority for the government, such as confronting the coronavirus and facing the economic crisis as a result of low oil prices. He also stressed the implementation of the government program, the holding of early elections, the restriction of arms in the hands of the state, and the provision of a competitive electoral environment for all. Mr. Amar al-Hakim said, Iraq is a region where interests converge and do not boycott it calling for a balanced foreign policy, stressing the need to finish completing the remaining vacant ministry so that the government can move along a single horizontal line. He also called the government to meet the legitimate demands of the demonstrators, communicate with and listen to the youth, and move the wheel of the economy by supporting the private sector, expressing our support for any plan that elevates the national product. Next article of interest. Maza Ar Saleh, Al Qazmi's government will launch the first package to revive the economy. On Thursday, advisor to the Prime Minister for Financial Affairs, Maza Ar Mohammed Saleh, revealed the existence of packages of measures to revitalize the national economy. Saleh said in a statement to the official agency, followed by NAS, May 7, 2020 that there are packages of important measures to revitalize the national economy, noting that the first package of them includes the adoption of small loans for young people on very soft terms, as well as large private loans in the areas of agricultural activity, manufacturing, and services, especially as they are income and revenue generating. He explained that this initiative represents the integration of the monetary and financial policies of Iraq towards building economic stability and strengthening markets in addition to advancing sustainable development paths and raising levels of employment and use and combating recession. Saleh added that the package will go out as a priority to revitalize the agricultural movement in fundamental aspects, including facilitating the acquisition and acquisition of agricultural lands supporting agricultural production and agricultural technology, and in accordance with the requirements of strengthening Iraq's food security and advancing national agriculture. He continued, the first package will be taken over by the al qazemi government to support the macro economy and the national market and move the state apparatus more efficiently. Expectations indicate that Iraq may witness an annual performance that is the worst for the country since the overthrow of Saddam Hussein's regime in 2003, especially since Baghdad is currently considering the possibility of deduction of huge public salaries, in a move that will receive popular rejection and may renew the wave of protests with a new government taking over. According to a report published by the French news agency, and followed by Nas, May 7, 2020, the GDP of Iraq is expected to decrease by 9.7% this year, and poverty rates may also double, according to the expectations of the World Bank, making this the worst annual performance the country since Saddam Hussein was toppled in 2003. The second largest producer of OPEC was affected by a double blow, firstly by the collapse of oil prices, and secondly by the COVID-19 pandemic which dramatically affected its oil revenues. And Iraq's oil revenues last month reached $1.4 billion, less than a third of the $4.5 billion that the country needs per month to pay public sector salaries, compensation and government costs. That is, the Iraqi government suffers every month from losing $3.1 billion in oil revenue. In the face of this crisis, officials may put massive payrolls on the deduction list. According to two senior officials involved in discussions to suggest solutions, the basis for salaries is more likely to remain the same, 
and austerity measures will extend to the large allocations that made up two-thirds of the $36 billion budget for salaries in 2019. These allowances include rewards or benefits such as cars and homes, based on factors that include seniority, educational level, children, or informally political and family relationships. An Iraqi official says that the cuts we are studying include reducing the allocations of high-ranking public officials by more than half, the average level by 50 percent, and the low level by about 30 percent. The government will also consider freezing recruitment and promotions, cutting military spending, and stopping maintenance of government buildings to save more money. The authorities may even print the currency to pay salaries which will force the central bank to use its foreign reserves of $60 billion to support the dinar exchange rate against the dollar. These measures are part of the $54 billion emergency financing document, just over a third of the amount budgeted for the 2020 draft budget that Parliament has yet to pass. It is the first time that we have had to do something similar. Too little, too late, and Iraqi economic analyst Ali Malawi told France Press that, with the deficit increasing every month, what kind of measures will the government take now to try to avoid the economic disaster? It is really very little and very late. The government pays salaries to 4 million employees, pensions for 3 million, and aid for a million others, which means that one out of every five Iraqis receives what can be considered payments from the state. Malvi says that the government of Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi, as its predecessors, has appointed employees to please political allies. He adds that oil prices rose when Abdul Mahdi took office, which led to a false sense of safety from his government, and expanded in the public sector to the stage of losing control, which led to this serious financial crisis. For 2019, the government monitored a 13% increase in salary expenses, and jumped 127% in pensions according to a World Bank analysis. Late last year, the government employed at least 500,000 people in an effort to appease angry anti-government protesters protesting against unemployment and corruption, which led to salary inflation inflated again by 25 percent. Public jobs are inherited from the previous era in Iraq, as university graduates are theoretically employed by a related ministry upon their graduation but this strategy has overburdened the public sector engulfed by corruption. The benefits associated with government positions mean that they are sold for hundreds of thousands of dollars by grade, while the private sector is regrettably unrepentant. This is an economy that does not create jobs, says Wheel Mansour, chief economist at the World Bank in Iraq. This raises problems in a country with rapid population growth and is set to increase 10 million in the next decade to 50 million. If they really want to make an impact, the only place to do that is by salaries, says Mansour. Difficult decision. However, similar austerity measures could spark more social unrest, with public services already weakening and unemployment rising, according to the World Bank. The new prime minister, Mustafa Akazemi, had hoped that he would not have to start his mandate with cuts, but fear of public reaction prevented the caretaker government headed by Abdel Mahdi from implementing the cuts. No one wanted to take responsibility, says a second official involved in developing emergency procedures. The same official describes the meetings in which caretakers were more focused on signing last-minute contracts that would earn them quick bribes, knowing that their days in government were numbered. Given the prospect of a further drop in oil revenues in May with lower prices and demand, things could get worse. If we don't agree on something swift, there will be no money in June. We will have to announce a full government shutdown, and this is a precedent, the official said. Next article of interest comes from the World Bank report. Structural reforms needed to manage a multifaceted crisis. Iraq is facing a combination of acute shocks which the country is ill-prepared to manage, according to a new World Bank report. It says the outlook for Iraq, which was already negative prior to the COVID-19 shock, has markedly worsened since. The WBG and the GOI have jointly identified priority reform areas that have the strongest potential for achieving the objectives of one, 
private sector-led diversification and 2. Reforming governance and promoting private sector participation in selected productive sectors that can subsequently boost Iraq's participation in the digital economy. These priority reform areas cut across all five elements of the digital economy framework and are meant to boost accountability, transparency, and trust. Transitioning Iraq towards a resilient and inclusive digital economy will require economic reforms and longer-term development priorities along the five digital economy pillars, ensuring affordable access to high-speed internet, achieving widespread adoption of cashless payments, delivering digital government services and improving access to data, upskilling young Iraqis with technological know-how, and scaling up the digital entrepreneurship ecosystem. The proposed short- and medium-term improvements below are prioritized by promoting actions with the highest potential to keep Iraq on track with its commitment to boosting its digital economy across the five pillars. These 18, 18, critical recommendations are also included in the Strategic Note on Priority Reform Areas, aka Iraq White Paper. Immediate to short-term measures. 1. Removing restrictions on private operators to build, own, and operate domestic and international fiber infrastructure. 2. Promulgating the payment systems law to facilitate digital payments. 3. Providing a timetable to update the 2012 to 15 EGOV strategy and action plan for a paperless government. 4. Building confidence with online disclosure of information on public tenders and contract awards, starting with major transactions and allowing for public feedback. 5. Mandating startups and tech companies registration to select eligible support structures. 6. Adopting a national law on private equity and venture capital funds. 7. Establishing a seed capital fund. And 8. In partnership with the private sector, piloting digital training programs for youth to increase their access to digital wage employment opportunities such as online freelancing, micro-work, telework, outsourcing, etc. Short to medium term measures. 9. Allocating 4G spectrum. 10. Developing and implementing PS in the rebuilding of critical fiber infrastructure to achieve 10% fiber connectivity by 2023. 11. Rolling out national ID cards. 12. Strengthening the existing cash payment systems through upgrading technologies for improved governance and efficiency. 13. Developing regulations to implement the payment systems law. 14. Reforming the curriculum for digital skills across the education spectrum, ranging from primary to tertiary institutions, including TVETs. 15. Introducing programs that provide demand-driven digital training opportunities for youths. 16. Establishing an electronic system for e-visa issuance to attract foreign investors. 17. Streamlining current legal requirements to start a business. 18. Addressing government accountability in delivering services such as simple e-government tools. Example, a mobile-based citizen feedback platform. Like, subscribe and share to help support the channel. Check out the Denarian blog, Facebook and Twitter as I post important daily updates on these platforms throughout the day as well. The links to these and other invaluable sites are in the description box below. Knowledge is power. Using that knowledge is powerful. Over and out for now, the Denarian.